Good morning, King's Gate, and welcome to Palm Sunday, live on YouTube. We're glad to be with you, wherever you are. We've been just pressing in to God's presence this morning, and the atmosphere in the room is just amazing. And so wherever you are, just position your heart to receive. I know God wants to come. He wants to come and ride in. Just as he entered Jerusalem, he wants to come and ride into your life, ride in to your heart. He came in humility, humbly, on a donkey, but he came as a king. And however he wants to come this morning, we want to receive him. Whether he comes as a humble, a humble shepherd, or if he comes as a glorious king, we want our hearts to be open to receive him. I'm going to receive, read from Psalm 117. It says, Let everyone everywhere shine with praise to Yahweh. Let it all out. Go ahead and praise him. For he has conquered us with his great love, and his kindness has melted our hearts. His faithfulness lasts forever, and he will never fail you. So go ahead, let it all out. Praise Yah, O oh, Yah. That name, Yah, is the name of God as he displays his power. And I believe that God wants to display his power in our lives and all over the face of the earth. So let's take our place as those who who stand in the gap, who stand between heaven and earth and usher in the presence of God, usher the presence of God into every circumstance, into every situation. We've been reading so many praise reports this week about how God is showing up in the midst of every circumstance that's going on, how he is showing up as healer, how he is showing up as provider, he, as how he is showing up as the faithful friend, the one who sticks closer than a brother, the one who never abandons us or forsakes us. In this season, we're, we're encountering, encountering him in new and in fresh ways. We get to see different dimensions of who he is, and it just gives us more cause to worship him, more reasons to exalt him. And so this morning we come, we come with hearts full of praise. We come to exalt the King of glory because he's worthy. He's so worthy of our adoration. He's so worthy of our praise. So we say, Holy Spirit, would you come? Would you come? Would you enter into every space? Would you enter into every room? Would you come deep in our hearts this morning? We welcome you. We welcome you into the room of our hearts this morning. Come, come, risen Savior. Come, conquering King. Come, beautiful Savior. Come, you who enters riding, riding on the back of a donkey. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We welcome you, Jesus. We welcome you this morning. We exalt you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's worship. Blessed is the one who 
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. This morning, uh, we're going to start off um, and move into something that's maybe a little different considering that we're doing this in a very empty room. But in the middle of your living room or your bedroom, wherever you are that you're watching this, I just want to encourage you to get up. Get off your chair. Because, you know, we're celebrating Palm Sunday today. And if the people of Jerusalem only knew what they were really crying out for, if they really only knew that in a week, Jesus would have defeated death, would have defeated hell, would have defeated sin and sickness, man, they would have shouted differently. They would have expected differently. And so this morning, I should encourage you to worship God from a place of victory and even from a place of mystery. We don't know what's about to happen. We don't know what's coming. But on Palm Sunday, we know that Jesus is marching in to have victory. So this is a day of celebration. So join with us as we do that this morning. We will dance, we will dance for your glory. We will dance, we will dance for your glory. We will dance for your glory, Lord. We will lift up a shout to adore you. Every sound that we make, it is for you. We will dance for your glory, Lord. For salvation's in this place. You're the name by which we're saved, Jesus, Jesus. Let your name be lifted high as our faithful hearts now cry, Jesus, Jesus. Lift up your hands, you ancient gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors. be glorified. The King is coming in. The King is coming in. We will dance, we will dance for your glory. We will dance, we will dance for your glory. We will dance for your glory, Lord. We will dance, we will dance, we will dance for your glory. We will dance for your glory. We will dance for your glory, Lord. Shout to adore you. Every sound that we make, it is for you. We will dance for your glory, Lord. For salvation's in this place. You're the name by which we're saved. Jesus, Jesus. Let your name be lifted high as our thankful hearts now cry. You ancient gates be lifted up, you ancient doors. The king is coming in, the king is coming in. We lift up a shout to shake the sky, lift up a cry, be glorified. The king is coming in, the king is coming in. Cause we're the people of God with the song to sing, and we're bringing our lives as an offering. We will dance for your glory, Lord. And the cross is the hope that we hold up high as we tell the whole world of your love and life. We will dance for your glory, Lord. We're the people of God. We're the people of God with the songs you sing. We're bringing our lives to the offering. We will dance for your glory, Lord. Cross is the hope that we hold up high. We tell the whole world of your love and life. We will dance for your glory, Lord. Lift up your heads, lift up your heads, you ancient days. Be lifted up, you ancient doors. The King is coming in. The 
King is coming down. Oh, we lift up a shout to shake the sky. Lift up a cry, be glorified. The King is coming in. The King is coming in. So lift up your heads, you ancient gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors. The King is coming in. The King is coming in. We lift up a shout to shake the sky. Lift up a cry, be glorified. The King is coming in. You ancient gates be lifted up, you ancient doors. The king is coming in. The king is coming in. We lift up a shout to shake the skies. Lift up a cry to glorify. The king is coming in.
the things you've done before in greater measure God you will do again cause there's no prison wall you can't break through no mountain you can move all things are possible there's no broken body you can't raise no soul that you can't save all things are possible the darkest night you can light it up you can light it up oh god of overcome you've already won who cut a revival you've rose in victory and now you're seated forever on the throne so I should my heart fear what you defeated I will trust in you alone cause there's no prison wall you can't break through no mountain you can move all things are possible there's no broken Pour it 
Would you come and fill us up? Would you dig our hearts out deeper? Would you dig the well in our spirits deeper that we would have an expanded capacity, an expanded capacity for what you want to pour out into us? Prepare your people. Prepare your people. Prepare us for the season ahead. Prepare us for that which is coming. Prepare us for an outpouring. Prepare us for harvest. Prepare us for nations turning. Prepare us for knees bowing. Bow, the, bow our hearts, God. Bow our lives before you cause us to humble ourselves in your presence.
cause your body to bow itself in your presence. To bow itself before you. This week we come into the season of Passover. Where Israel that had been in bondage in Egypt for 430 years was led out. This was a generation that had been born in captivity. They didn't know anything else. They didn't know freedom. They didn't know anything else but the system of slavery that they had been born into. In the midst of this, God says, I want you to prepare a meal that you are going to eat in haste. I want you to take a spotless lamb into your house. I want you to bring a spotless lamb into your home for four days. And on the fourth day, you're going to kill that lamb. And as a family, you're going to eat that lamb. But you're going to eat it in haste. You're going to eat it with your belt on. You're going to eat it with your shoes on. You're going to eat it with your staff ready. And church, I believe this is a season where the lamb is asking to be invited into your home. Where there's things that you've just kind of let lie. It's a season to prepare your home for the lamb. To prepare your home for the spotless, perfect lamb who wants to come. You see, Jesus turned the altar into a table. He's our perfect lamb that was slain. And what was an altar of sacrifice became a table of communion. And in this season, he's inviting you around the table of communion as a family. That you would partake of the beautiful, broken body of Jesus. That you would drink of the blood that was poured out as a family. He's asking you to take that belt of truth and to tie it tightly around your waist. There may be things that need to be sort of squished out of the way as that belt tightens around you. There's, there's no more room for our opinions. The only thing that doesn't move like sand is the truth of Jesus. It's time to lay down our opinions and pick up the belt of truth. He's asking us to have our feet ready, to have them shod with the good news of Jesus. You've got to feed yourself in this season on the good news of what Jesus is doing. You need to remember what he's done. Remember who he's been. Feed yourself on the good news of who he is. And take up your staff. Take up your staff of authority. And don't allow the enemy to trespass. To trespass with his lies. To trespass with intimidation. To trespass with hopelessness. Because we serve a God of hope. We serve a God of all hope. So take up that staff and prepare your home because we are in a passing over season. We're going from one land to another and things will never look the same. And what we've been used to for the past season, we can't go back to. We can't go back to the land of captivity when it's a season to move out into the land of promise. And so I just encourage you during this season, during this time, take this opportunity. Take this opportunity to commune at the table. It's his table. It's the table of the Lord. Whenever you sit down at that table, he sits down with you. He communes with you at that table. 
It's a time to let the truth of that communion table go deep. We serve a resurrected Savior. We serve the one who has overcome. He has overcome the grave. He has overcome sickness. He is our Passover lamb. And there is nothing that you need right now that he has not provided, that he has not spread on that table for you to feast on. So in this season, feast on Jesus. Feast on the goodness of God. Passover is on April 8th. Eight is new beginnings. This is a table of new beginnings. It's a table of new things. And he's coming to make all things new. Amen. Amen. Pastor Matt's going to bring the word this morning. So you get your Bible out, get your notebook ready, and uh, he's going to come and share the word. Just bear with us as we transition. I want to give Danny a second to make sure that he's got decent volume on the mic. We've got a whole new setup for our sound system for what is being mixed and being sent out. It's our first week using it, and so I hope the sound is sounding better, but it takes, uh, there's only a few of us in the room, and it takes uh, us jumping between different tasks. For instance, I've been wearing headphones for the last 45 minutes. And my head feels kind of funny because I've been listening to you, what you guys are listening to over the computer. It sounded good to me. I hope it sounded good to you. All right. I haven't preached yet since we started this um, online streaming. But today I am going to just continue preaching because it's time to have some normalcy in our life and to come back to what it is God's calling us to do. Because just because we've got things going on in our nation and in our world um, that are different and because we're isolated and because we're, you know, being pushed into our homes right now uh, to keep each other safe, God hasn't changed. God has not changed at all. And the plans and purposes He has have not changed. He still has plans and purposes for people's lives. He still has plans and purposes for churches and for King's Gate. And just because we can't be together doesn't mean his plans have changed. So I was seeking God this week. Sorry, just bear with me as I move stuff around. Um, I was seeking God this week, and what God brought to my mind was a scripture that has been a foundational scripture of this house for a very long time. Um, Pastor Rob has preached from this so much that we can almost recite it verbatim, and that is Joshua chapter 1. And so I would like us to turn in our Bibles, if you have them with you. I'm pretty sure my dad, my dad guessed exactly what I was going to say and had already turned there. But uh, if you can please turn to Joshua chapter 1. We're going to start on verse 2, and we're going to read right through to verse 9. Verse 2 of Joshua chapter 1, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I am giving to them and the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot has tread upon, I have given to you. 
as I said to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to your fathers to give to them. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from the left to the right hand, that you may, not, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe and do, to do according all that is written in it. For then you will make your way, for then he will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. I was reading that this week, and uh, what I noticed first of all is how many times, three times in there, God says, be strong and of good courage. He says it a little different each time, be strong and courageous, only be strong and have good courage. He says these, later on actually in Joshua, just before you get to verse, uh, chapter 2, uh, Joshua says to the people of Israel, be strong and courageous. We are in a season where in life we have to be strong and courageous. We cannot shrink back. We cannot be those who run and hide. There is a world out there full of fear. And yet there are children of God who are full of faith. And it is our job to step out of the walls, even of our homes sometimes, in this season, and bring faith, to bring courage. You see, we're still going out and about and getting groceries. We're still getting out and about and maybe going for a walk. But there's nothing stopping you as the weather begins to improve. I know today, if you look out your window, you probably didn't go outside like we did. It isn't very warm out today, and it is snowing today. But this week, it's supposed to warm up, and in the weeks ahead, it's going to warm up. And as you're taking a walk, maybe you notice a neighbor standing on their front porch or somewhere in their front yard or their rear yard, and you are able to just stop and talk and begin to give hope to those who are hopeless. We must be people of great courage. Pastor Rob preached this very message, this portion of this message about how many times God talks about this back in the 90s. I remember him talking about be strong and of good courage. And I think it's very interesting that the last time I preached, we were preaching vision just before we announced the building project um, of taking on the giants. And in the last weeks, a major giant has arisen in our world. It has awakened and it is, it is roaring and trying to show its strength. Now, it didn't do it just because Kingsgate Church decided they were ready to take on giants. But I think it was God getting us ready to take on giants, to be ready for this season. I called us a Caleb generation. I know I've just read here about Joshua crossing the Jordan and getting prepared to cross the Jordan. And we are a Caleb generation. I believe the reason God was calling us to be ready to go and take on giants is because we needed to wake up. If we had not woke, gotten awakened back in January, what's happened in the last couple of weeks may have just completely swept us off our feet. We needed to be prepared to face giants. We needed to be prepared to face hardship. 
when New Life Christian Fellowship was first established, this church faced a lot of hardship. When, when Cocker Valley Community Church was going through things in the 90s and when we were building this place, we had hardship, we had, we had hard times. And for a long time, Kingsgate Church has been very comfortable. It's been easy to camp around a well and just draw water from the well and just say, this is good, let's camp here. But that's not the kind of church we've been called to be. We've been called to be pioneers. We've been called to be churches or a church that is pushing ahead, that is taking territory, that is taking down giants. That means we are a church that is continuously moving forward, continuously mobile, and continuously taking risk. And in this season, we have to get out of our comfort zone. God is calling us out and he's saying, be strong and courageous. I believe God's going to actually call some of us to do things that uh, maybe we're not comfortable with. Last night, God was saying to me, I wonder how many pastors or clergy are visiting the hospitals right now and even trying to get permission to go and pray and be with people. You know, we're isolating ourselves. We're holding ourselves back. I'm not saying that you should run to the hospitals and, and get in the way of everybody that's trying to do things, but maybe... There's one or two of us that are meant to see if we can find permission to go and pray with those who need to be prayed with. Because people are alone right now. What is it that we're being called to be of strong courage? To be strong and of great courage. You know, in this passage, God makes promises to Israel. He continues the promises saying, I will give you what I promised I would give to Moses. I am going to give to you what I promised I would give to Abraham. This church, the church of Canada, has promises. The church in the world has promises from God. And He has not forgotten His promises. He has not forgotten his promises. In fact, today, he wants to remind us that he was with us in the dark ages. He did not forsake his church. He was with his church through every era that has come before since it was established. I was looking this week at World War I and World War II and the Spanish flu in the hard times. Guess what? God was still there. God was still with His people. He was still there in the hardship and in the hard times. And it was a chance and a time for the church to arise. It was a time and a, ch and a chance for the church to show the strength of our God. I actually pondered this week. Jillian and I were talking. And I said to Jill, you know, there, was, there, there seemed to be a lack of fear in the hearts of men and women in World War I and World War II. That they were willing to lay everything down. That we had Winston Churchill saying, we will fight them on the beaches. And we will go in and we will take and destroy this enemy. What was it that even non-Christians, people who didn't even know Jesus, were not afraid? And I see so much fear right now in our world. And I said, God, what is it? And Jill said to me, Honey, up until this generation, at least people still believed in heaven. One of the worst things the devil has done to our generation is by making them not believe that there is a hell, they have made them believe that there is not a heaven. And so everybody who ha does not believe that there is a heaven has no hope. They see this virus as the end of all things to them if they lose their life. They see that this season is only hardship and pain. But there is hope beyond today. There is hope beyond tomorrow. There are promises to the earth and there are promises for heaven. There are promises to us that know Jesus, that have come through the cross. That there is hope, everlasting hope. And I just feel like 
we need to make sure that our hope is strong. You know, I haven't been strong all week in my hope. But we need to be strong in our hope. It's hard when I can't hear any amen, so I'm hoping you're yelling amen at home. And those here are welcome to yell amen. There you go. So God promised the land to Israel. He also said that nothing would hold them back. What did we know that was in the land of Israel? Giants. We knew that there were armies and there were giants and there were those that were going to oppose the children of Israel. But God said, hey, nothing will stand in your way. Saints, we can feel right now like we're a little defeated because we're not able to come to church and be together. But guess what? God's still winning. God is still winning. He still has the victory. He still has promises that He is going to keep to us. Tomorrow's not the end. The next day is not the end. We are going from glory to glory even when what we see around us feels like destruction feels like hardship. You know what I've come to terms with is that when the enemy's pushing this hard, man, he's, there's something he's trying to stop right now in the world. The resistance we are feeling in the natural is because the enemy is afraid of what the church wants to become. The church is waking up. It is waking up in this world. And nothing scares the devil more than the church arising. So he has awakened a giant called pandemic that has not been seen in a long time. But we will make this giant bow to the name of Jesus. We will stand as Christians and we will take our place and we will take our position in our homes. We will take our position in our place of work. We will take our position in our place of community and we will fight back. And we will see this giant bow to the name of Jesus. Greater is he who is in us than he that is in this world. He cannot win. He will not be victorious. You know, it's funny because so we got these promises right here from God to Israel, but then he makes some you know, some rules around what to do. You know, if you want the promises to come true, you better do this. So in verse 7, he says, do everything that I have called you to do. Do not turn to the left and to the right. Saints, do not let go of the things that we have been called to be at Kingsgate Church. We have been called to be salt and light. Do not let your house become a peck measure of your light do not let it hide you from the world. Be strong and courageous and know when God is telling you to take a walk because there's another person out there walking that needs to hear your voice. You need to be mobilized. You need to be out there. One of the things we do at Kingsgate, sorry, I keep adjusting my mic, but here at Kingsgate, one of the things we do and we are still doing it has not ended because we are sitting in our living rooms and we are not together, and that is pursuing the presence of God. That has not changed. Now, more than ever, I'm going to call you to worship. I'm going to call you to times of worship in your home. And you may go, well, Matt, Kingsgate is not offering that much worship. Let me tell you something. There is 24-7 worship online right now. Someone, somewhere, in some nation, at some hour of the day, is worshiping. We've got a burn event coming up, and I think it's 190-something hours. 168, it's, it's down. Well, anyways, it's starting today. Okay, so it's starting today. We're going to be doing one hour. Danny and Aaron are going to be doing one hour of worship. There is worship all the time right now. You start to feel down, put on some worship. 
You start to, uh, actually this week, I'm going to kind of just throw this in here because it just came to me. The Lord just brought it to my mind. This week, John Raz was doing, um, was doing a live stream. And in the middle of the live stream, he just began to say, I think someone's got a headache. And as soon as he said that, the Lord said to me, fear and depression are currently hiding themselves and manifesting themselves as headaches. Because we know what fear feels like. We know what depression feels like. We know when we feel fear and depressed as Christians how to fight that. Because we feel it. We know we need to go to the, the Lord. And so the devil's smart too. And he says, I'm going to hide myself in a headache. And so I shared that online on, as John's doing his live stream. I commented, like you guys are commenting right now. I commented and said, hey John, I believe that right now that uh, fear and depression are manifesting in headaches. So I say that because, saints, if you are experiencing headaches, it might not be a headache. It might be fear, and it might be depression. And actually, John prayed instantly after, he prayed for headaches, and then after I did that, he prayed over fear and depression, and then all of a sudden, two people wrote in and go, my headache is gone. So I just want to stop right now while we're doing this, and we're going to pray over fear and depression. God, we just come right now and we stand. We stand strong in this season where fear and depression want to take rule and reign in the hearts of God's people and in our world and in our nation. And we stand and we say, you will not hide yourself. You will not hide yourself in physical things like headaches, but you will manifest in what you truly are so we know how to deal with you. And we say, fear and depression be gone in the name of Jesus. Be broken off of those in Kingsgate Church, those in the sound of my voice that are listening to us online, that maybe you've never even visited Kingsgate. We just pray right now, we break fear and depression off of you. We break it off of our nation. May, this, may my voice carry through the airwaves into our nation out of the speakers, out of this room, out of your homes, fear and depression be gone in the name of Jesus. We may be socially isolated, but we are not in isolation. We are not isolated. The presence of God is here and it is now. We declare the Holy Spirit to just come to Canada. Holy Spirit, just come to Canada. Just flood this land. That the song of joy would arise in the homes. That the windows would be thrown open and the songs of joy would be sung. Satan, you will not win. You may take lives, which seems like it's victory, but you will not win. You will not win. In Jesus' name, amen. Sorry, that's going off my notes, but that's just what God hit me with. We are not changing. We are still pursuing God's presence. So I am calling you, saints, worship. Go online. If you don't, can't find a live stream, go to YouTube. Type in Bethel Music. There is endless hours of worship. You could worship for a year and not listen to it all. If You've got the finances. Join Bethel TV. They have so much live worship going on. You can worship almost 24-7 right now. We need to pursue the presence, not just here. You see, if you're waiting to get back here to pursue the presence, by the time you get back here, you may have lost it. See, there was presence in this room this morning. There was there was very few of us worshiping. I had headphones on and I was worried about the live mix and I'm getting lost in the worship and the sound of praise and the presence of God that is filling my heart. Saints, I am calling you to worship. You know what? Home is the best place to worship because you can lay flat on your face on the floor and be a blubbering mess and no one but your spouse or your family sees. You got no one else to be worried about seeing you like that. You can dance like you've never danced before. You can dance like no one ever wants you to dance again. But you can dance. You can get up in your living room and you can dance. You can worship. 
Worship is not only good when there are 50 or 100 or 100 or 50 or 1,000 or 10,000 people. Worship is good when it's just you and God. And if you actually can't learn to worship there, you will not actually see the greatest worship of your life. I had to learn at one point in my life after the 90s that things had kind of settled down. I was like, man, worship isn't as good as it used to be. I'm not sensing the Holy Spirit like I used to. And God had to take me on a journey of me worshiping with Him. And I found that when I found that place of worship, just me and Him, corporate worship everywhere I went was ten times better. When corporate worship's not good for me, I know my worship in my regular life is not where it needs to be. So I've exhausted that one. Let's move on, right? <laughs> uh, you know what? King's Gate and the church is advancing. We may feel like we're not advancing. We may feel like we're stuck at home and the devil has like stopped us in our tracks, but we are advancing. In the last three weeks, we have purchased equipment. I'm looking at the camera right now and on all of you. Danny is back there right now with the soundboard that controls the live feed. We, have, we are doing things that is advancing the kingdom of God and this house forward. We thought we were waiting another few years before this happened. God had other plans. My grandfather used to say, man makes plans and God laughs. So here we are. We've got this. And you want to know what's so amazing is I've done looking at the YouTube analytics of this. So on a Sunday morning, we might have 50 to 80 people in this sanctuary. That includes the children. So maybe we have 30 or 40, maybe 50 adults on a Sunday morning in this room. If I go through and I look at the analytics, it tells me how many people have viewed it. That's what you guys see. You see how many views. But it tells me how many unique viewers there have been. And on average right now, we are reaching 100 to 125 people online. I'm assuming those are adults. I'm assuming that actually what they're telling me isn't only one person. It might be 1.5 because some of them are going to be two people watching. Saints, we are reaching people. We are preaching hope in the churches. And guess what? I think that non-Christians are hearing hope. If you don't know Jesus today and you've stumbled across this YouTube feed, Jesus loves you, and he's calling to you, and he has hope where there is no hope in your life right now. If you just get on your knees right now and say, Jesus, come, prove yourself to me, show yourself to me, fear and anxiety and depression will not be your portion. So we just release that to those that maybe have stumbled across this feed. I release that to you. There's another thing here in verse 8. God says, do not depart from the law. Well, we're not in the law anymore. But what I want to tell you is, do not depart from the Word of God. Do not depart from this. This is our lifeline right now. Because you can't keep getting words of knowledge and words of wisdom from everybody else. Right now, you're stuck maybe getting words of knowledge and words of wisdom from yourself. Get into the Word of God. The Lord says in this that if we do not depart from these things, we will have great success. That's what he promised the children of Israel. And I believe it's a promise to us. In this season, as we want to take the ground, as we want to see this virus, COVID, turned around and the curve flattened, the infection curve and the death rate, we want to see it all flattened. We want to see fear and depression taken away. If we do the things that God is calling us as the children of God to do, calling us to the Word, calling us to worship, calling us to intimacy with Him, we will not be held back. And your walls and the separation between you and your neighbor will not hold back what the Holy Spirit wants to do. Because you might get a phone call from someone you did not expect to get a phone call for because the Holy Spirit is hearing what's going on in your heart and He's doing work for you next door because He's not isolated. 
He's not in social, social isolation. The Holy Spirit's not scared. He didn't leave because COVID came into the, into the country. In fact, I believe that the angels are getting antsy to get to war against this, this giant. Saints, we're being called to our knees. What if one hour of prayer a week from each of us turned the tide this week? Just from us. What if all of Canada on its knees for one hour this week turned the tide in our entire country and continent? What if all the Christians that can hear this, that are listening to other people preach messages across this world, gets on their knees for one hour this week? Could we see the entire world's line and curve? flatten. This enemy can be defeated. We have politicians and, and people out there saying right now that this could be July before we're out. Let me tell you something. If the Lord w begins to work on our behalf, if the angels begin to get released because the people of God get awakened, this could be over much faster. You don't want to be in your home anymore? Get on your knees. Honestly, you don't want to be stuck at home anymore? Get on your knees. You want to be strong and courageous? Get on your knees. You want to be strong and courageous? Put on some worship music. You want to be strong and courageous? Get into the Word of God. Begin prophesying over your neighbors. Begin sending them emails, words of wisdom, words of encouragement. And let's begin to take back our nation. Let's begin to actually fight this giant. Because you know something? If you read in Joshua 1, the things of God are still yes and amen. If you read in there, God is saying, I'm with you. He is yes and amen to us in this season. When we call out on him and we call out for COVID to be stopped dead in his tracks, do you know what heaven echoes? Yes and amen. Do you want to know something? God is still good. He's good to those that are healthy. He's good to those that are sick. He's even good to those that have lost a loved one in the last few weeks. God is still good. Call out. He is still good. God is still for us. And the Bible says that if He is for us, who can be against us? Who can be against us? What can be against us in this season? We know that greater are those that are for us than that which is against us. We know that God has all the resources we need. You're worried about your pantry emptying? You're worried about not enough toilet paper? And maybe you go to Walmart and they have no toilet paper? Guess what? It's time for you to ask God to multiply toilet paper. And He can do so. I think there's some extra luxury Charmin up in heaven. I think it's nice and quilted and very well padded. I think once I experience it, I'm going to ask God to never let me go back to any other type of toilet paper again. I want heaven toilet paper. Saints, he looks after his kids. Do we believe that? Do we believe that God looks after his kids? Yeah, I do. And I believe that I'm not only his son. I don't believe that Jillian and Aaron are only his daughters. And I don't believe that you're his only sons and daughters that are listening. The whole world is full of his sons and daughters. Those who know him and those who don't. And guess what? His heart is towards them. His heart is towards them. He has not forgotten us. He has not changed the destiny of Canada. He has not changed the destiny of Kingsgate Church. And greater are the days before us than those that are behind us. This is only a season where we're going through hardship. We've been very comfortable and I think very soft people. And we will come out the other side strong because of hardship. The only way sometimes to build muscle is to work against is resistance. It's to lift weight. We're lifting weight, saints. And we will see God be good even when man fails. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's pray together.
Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Ah. Oh, you're here, Holy Spirit. God, we know you are so good. God, we call for you to rest in this place. Oh, we call for you to rest upon us. Lord, give us strength and tenacity for the days ahead. Lord, where we feel fear and depression, give us hope. Call us to our knees. Call us to our prayer closets. Call us to your word. Call us to worship. Lord, we want to see the days at the end of 2020 and the days beginning 2021 better than today. Better than 19, uh, 2019. Better than 2018. Better than 1990. We still want to see you be good. And we know you will be. Lord, we call right now upon you and ask that you would speak to our leaders and our doctors and those that are looking after all of the details around this, this season. That they will choose the plan that is your plan that will limit the ashes of this season. Because God, we know you bring beauty out of ashes, but we want to limit the ashes. Lord, we call upon you right now for your hand to be on people to preserve life. Lord, where respirators may not be available, preserve those who cannot get a respirator. Lord, where doctors are having to choose who lives and who, does, and who dies, Lord, when the doctors have had to give up on someone, don't give up on them. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to sustain them. We ask for this virus to be stopped dead in its tracks. Well, I speak to every virus on every surface in the world. Die. Die. You will not continue to spread. We speak to the virus that is living within people right now, and we declare, die. In the name of Jesus, we, we command you to obo uh, um, obey the voice of heaven. We command you to die. We command you to come to an end. We command life and health back to our world. I don't care that it's going to stump every scientist why it just stopped, but it stops. You must obey the voice of the Lord God. For all authority is His. And I just declare hope to a world that is, that is so scared. I just declare hope. Father, we release You in the nation of Canada. We release You in the town of Cochrane, the province of Alberta, and in this world. And we say, hope. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I miss you all so much. You'll never know how much I miss you because Pastor Matt is the love language of touch. And I haven't touched many of you in a long time. And Jill now calls it the four love languages because there is no touch anymore. But my love language of, I'm, I can't wait to hug everybody. So bless you. I love you. We will see you soon. God bless.